Hello everyone, it's Christine from Christine Stamping Spot. Happy Labor Day Monday to all of you from wherever you're tuning in. I hope you're having a wonderful long weekend in September. Hard to believe it's already September, my gosh. Um, so today we are going to make a card using these iconic dies. Now that's actually the name of them, iconic dies. They are a die set um, that are a standalone die set, meaning they don't have a coordinating stamp set and they don't come in a bundle. And they're kind of, I think, a lost little gem in our large catalog. I think some people maybe haven't really even noticed that they're in here, but maybe you have. You can find them on page 163 of the large annual catalog. There are these ones here. And uh, this is what they look like. So they have some really, really cute images in here from the mushrooms to the bird to the bumblebee, some greenery, flowers, branches, like a little bit of everything for sort of a nature type themed card. So I just really, really thought these were cute and um, wanted to try making a project with them. And I did get some inspiration on Pinterest from um, a post that I saw from Mrs. Bees. Now, I, I don't know if that's a demonstrator or who she is, but um, this is the card that we're going to make, or a version of it, and um, I just thought this was cute. Just kind of a little, you know, life is better with a friend like you card, or happy birthday card. Like, you could use it for many, many different occasions, but I just thought it was a really sweet card, and I wanted to share how we're gonna make this today. So I have cut some pieces ahead of time and I'm gonna switch our base up a little bit. So on my sample, I did use crumb cake as my base, eight and a half by five and a half. And I also used a piece of crumb cake as the five and a quarter by four layer. But this time I'm gonna switch it up and use early espresso as our base. So again, I've cut this at eight and a half by five and a half. And this will be our base, sort of this landscape orientation. And then I stuck with the crumb cake layer. So this is five and a quarter by four. And I don't know if you can tell, but I've run this through the Timber 3D embossing folder, which is also in the large catalog. It looks like this. And so it kind of has let me get this open here. The look of wood grain in here. So, um, you know, very subtle, but it looks like, you know, sort of wood on a tree type of thing. And it is a large, <coughs> excuse me, 3D folder, so it's six by six. And so I already ran that through. Now, it's kind of subtle, so I wanted to kind of bring out those tree images, sort of the you know, the little circles and, and marks on the, on the timbers. So one side is a little more recessed and this one is a little more raised. So this is the one side I'm gonna work with and I'm going to just take a sponge dauber and my early espresso ink and I'm just gonna lightly go over this base and you could use a blending brush too if you wanted. I just thought I'll try, whoops, uh, just try the dauber. And you can add as little or as much as you like. And as you apply this, you're going to see that sort of the wood grain starts to appear a little bit and is a little bit more visible. And that's kind of what I wanted was to kind of bring this out a little bit. You could probably do this with crumb cake ink as well, but I thought, well, let's try the espresso. It's a little bit darker, and um, it may be a little bit more of a contrast in bringing those wood grains to the surface. And so just sort of gently go over that, covering the whole thing, because a lot of it will still be visible on our card. So I think that's pretty good. So I think you can probably tell the difference now. When I hold this up, you can kind of see 
a little bit more of the wood grain come through there in the tree. So I really like how that looks. Another folder, embossing folder, that you could try uh, if you didn't want to use the timber one um, is the new bark embossing folder. That's actually the one that was on the Pinterest sample. Um, and that looked really stunning as well. And with the same sort of technique, just sort of lightly brushed over to bring out some of the grain. Okay, so this we can now attach to our base. And it will have a little bit of a different look than the crumb cake sample, but I thought we would try it and see how it goes. And I think I'm gonna quite like this contrast here. So there's our five and a quarter by four. So there you can see it's a little bit different. Okay, so now we can start to assemble our mushrooms and our greenery and our branches. So these dies are really, really detailed. And so I cut out, I did pre-cut all my pieces. And so for example, these are the branches and I don't know if you can tell sort of the grain and the lines that go through here. And they're all kind of separated as well. Like that's how detailed these are. This stem just is sort of like in three pieces, yet it's all connected. That's just how detailed it is. I thought that was just beautiful. And um, the same with the mushrooms. So <clears throat> for, I started with this red one. And you can see here all of these are sort of separate little lines and yet they're all connected by the stem there so that's just how detailed these are I just think they're really cool okay so I'm gonna start by um, assembling these mushrooms so what I did was I cut two of each one um, I did uh, in white for both and the other was in red because I want the red to sit on top of the white and that's gonna be another little step. So it's a little bit of cuddling and piddliness but I just think it looks so, so cute when it's done. Okay, so those two go and those two go. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my scissors and there is like a little squiggly line here and so I'm just going to follow that with my scissors and just cut the stem off here of the red. And I'll do that on both of the mushrooms. Now if I'm not quite 100%, that's okay. Okay, and that piece I won't need. And then this one as well, this is just more of a little straight little line, so you can just cut that off, okay? Now, we're going to stick this red on top of the white, and we can line it up with the little, um, the little dots in there, and then we're still going to adhere a piece of white on the back. So, I could use adhesive sheets for this, but I think I would need quite a few of them. So I am just going to use the Tombow, the Tombow glue, and just gently apply some on these solid areas on the back. And even if it does seep out, um, it will dry clear. So you don't have to worry about that. So you're just gonna line it up with those dots okay and with the Tombow it gives you a little bit of wiggle room there okay so we'll do that one first and then we'll do the other red for the smaller mushroom and just try to get enough on but not so much that it seep seeps through All right, so then we're gonna put this on top of the little guy here, lining up those holes. And again, you can use them as your guide just to make sure it's in the right place. And then we are going to attach these on just a 
scrap piece of white, just the red part, because I want it to be white coming through the back. I don't want there to be holes showing, right? So again, I'm just going to add a bit of Tombow back here. Where all the little holes are on the cap of the mushroom. Because that's where the red will be. And then we're just going to trim around it. So I'm just going to put this one on first. Just lining up the red. Or the dots, really. You don't even have to worry about the bottom of the red. As long as the dots all have some white behind them. Okay, I must just put this one on too. And I just think these are so, so cute. All right, so we'll just make sure that those dots have some weight behind. And then we are going to trim these. Trim these out of the white. Okay, so all you have to do is take your snips and just go around the outside. You can even go underneath a little just to cut that white off. And there you have one mushroom. Cute, hey? I think he's really cute. You could probably do different colors of mushroom caps, but I think red seems to be kind of a standard almost when you see them in like storybooks and things. Okay, so let's just do this little one. And then we can start assembling some of these shortly. Okay, so there's our little guy. Okay, of course my fingers now have a little bit of glue on them. Okay, before I add these though, I'm going to just add a little bit of a So Saffron blend just around the edges because I found that the white is a little bit stark just by itself. And this was also on the Pinterest um, sample and I thought that was just a really cute little pop of color that they put there. So I'm gonna use the um, narrow end and again with your blends that you see the three dots here. So you're just going to loosen that cap with those to avoid breaking your tip. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the So Saffron just around the edges here and around the stem. Whoops. Just a little bit. Just to give a little bit of a change in color there. So if you can see that on the camera, it's very subtle yellow. It's very, very pale. And then the little one we're just gonna do here and along the stem. Okay, so there's the coloring. That's all we're gonna color. Okay, so now we can start assembling this. So, you know what? I think I'm gonna bring out my silicone mat just because I'm using glue here and I don't wanna get glue all over the place on my work surface. Okay, so the order to assemble. I'm gonna do it a little bit different than I did on my sample because I'd like to switch this up a little bit. This was my first attempt and I thought, oh, I could do a little bit better. So I did cut out some of the leaves here, the greenery, these are like big ferns. So three of them I cut with the dies, so this large leaf. And again, these are the two mushrooms that we used. And so I cut three out of the mossy meadow and two out of old olive. So I'm going to put these on first. 
Okay, so again, I'm gonna bring out the Tombow. And I'm just gonna put it on these leaves here. And it should stick to this embossing folder. You always worry sometimes with the raised image. But the Tombow is quite a strong adhesive, so I think we should be okay. It's just a little piddlier, right? Okay, so I think I'm gonna put this one, let's say about here. And you can play with placement, right? Um, there's no right or wrong on how to, how to put these on. Okay, so let's do it on the old olive one. And I always like using an odd number of greenery. I guess I could have even used an odd number of mushrooms on the card, but kind of with the sentiment, I think it kind of worked with it too. All right, so we'll stick this guy maybe kind of at an angle here. And just lightly press that down. And then we'll take another mossy meadow, and you could switch up the greens if you wanted. And granny apple green might be a nice bright green that you could use in here too. Uh, that would really pop. Okay, so let's put this one a little bit sort of to the side there. And then I'll take another mossy meadow for the other side. Now nothing says you have to put them in this order. You could, you know, if you wanted all your olive ones together and all, you know, whatever you want to do. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to put two of the mossies sort of side by side. Okay, so I'll stick this one out here. Just gently press and that glue will dry. So should dry clear so should be all right okay and our last one is the olive like I said adhesive sheets would work as well but I think you would need probably quite a few of them but it would probably speed up the process for sure okay this one we're gonna lay a little more flat I think kind of Okay, so there's our greenery. So then I am going to add our mushrooms on top. Now I guess I could have left a little bit of greenery um, not adhered down, but I think we'll put the branches on last. So that should cover, should cover that quite nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna put our mushrooms on with dimensionals. I'm gonna use minis and regular ones. So let's do the large one first. And then I'll put maybe one large one in the cap. Okay, so let's maybe put this one here, like so. And then our little one, I'm just gonna use one mini and one regular. These mini dimensionals are so awesome. And they come in black too, so. If you have something that you don't want the white to show, you can get them in black and that's awesome too. So I'm just gonna maybe tuck this one behind at a little bit of an angle, like so. Looking cute. All right, and then we will add our branches. Now I did cut three of them and we're just gonna sort of overlay them all. A little bit you could add more you could add less you don't even need branches if you don't want to but I thought well let's go with the broken twigs and we will 
see how we can assemble these. Okay, so let's start maybe this way. And I'm going to sort of overlap it a bit on that base of that mushroom. Okay, and then we will do another one here. This is the piggly part, but it is cute, I think. It's like a little fairy, fairy garden land. All we need are one of those gnomes from our Christmas gnome set that we had last year. <laughs> that would be a cute addition too, if, if they were the right size. Okay, so let's add this one on top here. I'm not too concerned if the, if the branch sticks up there, as long as some of that gets tacked down. And then one more, like you could leave it with two if you wanted as well. It's totally, totally up to you how many you would like to cut out. But uh, these would be great, like to have the birds sit on these branches if you did a different design. You know, you could have the bird on here and there's some nice flowers you could add. So there's lots of possibilities for designs with these dies, which are awesome. Maybe I'll just put this one, should I put these down here? Or do I want to cover that more now? I think I'll just leave it here. So they're kind of hidden under those branches a little bit. See? love it awesome awesome okay so then we need to add a greeting and I use the peaceful moment stamp set which is in the large catalog and I really like this life is better with a friend like you I thought this was really a cute sentiment to send to a friend that you maybe haven't spoken to for a while or that you just you know get along with really you know it's your best bud or whatever uh, but there are also some other nice sentiments in here that would work so I just uh, stamped on in early espresso ink on a half a pea, half an inch piece of basic white and then I use the banner punch to um, notch my and on one side but I think what I'm gonna do so it's not quite so stark I'm just gonna add a teeny teeny bit of sponging around here with the dauber as well just because I have some sort of sponging on that wood grain there I guess I'm adding a little bit more than I thought but oops it will work it's just fine there are no mistakes in stamping. That's my motto. It's all creative license. Okay, so here we are gonna pop this up with some dimensionals as well. And I'm just gonna use the minis here, I think. Not sure if the big ones might be a little close to the edge. So let's just use these. Okay. So I'm gonna put this, I don't wanna cover up all this nice work on the, on the branches there, so I'm just gonna stick it up towards the top, line it up with the edge of this crumb cake layer. And it's okay if it covers a little bit of the greenery, that doesn't bother me. And there you go, there is version two. So you've got one with crumb cake and one with the espresso, and I'm kind of leaning to the espresso. I really kind of like how that turned out. That extra dark um, base under there, I think makes everything else pop a little bit. This one is great too. Um, I just think I kind of prefer this one. Maybe let you know, let me know which one you guys like. So I hope you enjoyed that project and the iconic dies. I hope you'll consider taking a look at them. Um, I do have a new host code for September, but I don't have it in front of me, so I will post it on the post when I when I load up this video, as well as the measurements for this card. But uh, you can reach me at uh, chris.ludwig at hotmail.com with any questions. My website is christineludwig.stampinup.net, and you can also follow me on Facebook and Pinterest at Christine Stamping Spot. 
So I hope you're enjoying the rest of your long weekend and we will see you again next time. Have a great week. Bye for now.